Coming down in three, two, and one. I know we're going to get Brent Burns stories out of Seth Jarvis. So, Elliot, why don't we just open up with Brent Burns stories? So, Mario Ferraro sat right there and talked to us about getting dental advice <laughs> from Brent Burns uh, because he's got, you know, uh, a couple of teeth out and he's got to deal with it. Uh, when I say Brent Burns, what comes to your mind? There's like he's one of those players that's impossible not to have an opinion and a few stories on. Yeah, just the craziest person. I've probably ever met and not in like a super energy well energetically he's like a 12 year old and like a 38 year old body yeah but i think just uh the way he lives his life is is just insane like he it's like i've never met someone who has like a ranch snake farm like all this stuff like he's telling me stories yeah. about his ranch he's got pictures of like zebras on there and stuff like that like who in their right mind is <laughs> is running this in the summer but uh yeah he shot me a few texts this summer trying to get me to go down there once I heard snake boots when you're ever outside the house, I was like, nah, eh, probably not going <laughs> to sell me on that one. So maybe, maybe next summer, maybe next summer I'll grow over my fear. So Burns is a fascinating guy because to your point about, you know, the ranch and the animals and the reptiles and all of that, like that's the story and the look is great and <laughs> all of it. Um, talk to us as a hockey player though. Like what, when you see the hockey player, Brent Burns, what stands out for you? I mean, just being able to do what he does at such a high level at that age is incredible. Being able to, I think he broke our defenseman like single season points last year. So, mm -hmm. I mean, to be able to do that yeah. and uh, yeah, I think I like picking apart his game. I think his shot is just incredible. Being able yeah. to shoot as hard as he does from wherever. One timer. Yeah. It's, he might not know where it's going because he doesn't <laughs> pick up his head, but it's coming hard and it's usually coming pretty high. So how do you it's, like standing in front of that? Not great. You know, <laughs> I, I've had a few close calls, but uh, yeah, it's, he's, he's just the best. Yeah. You know, Seth, you're for yourself, just you're going in another year coming in like this summer. What did they tell you maybe in your, in their exit meetings with you, Rod? And what did you focus on this summer? I mean, I feel like it's the same. Most summers just getting bigger and stronger, being a smaller body. You need as much strength as you can get. Mm -hmm. And I think this summer, uh, I really took it to another level and I feel really confident about how I trained and my fitness level coming in, which is something that maybe in years past, it's been something I've been really trying to work on, but I think this year it's something I'm comfortable with. And w uh, what happened this summer that made you feel better? You know, I just matured a little bit. Yeah. I think, uh, maybe late puberty, maybe I'm finally, <laughs> finally, uh, hit my stride. Um, starting to grow. Not the Western hockey league program anymore. <laughs> no, no. The NHL program. Yeah. Or... I can kind of grow a little scruffy beard now. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, but I think just taking everything that I was doing before and just bumping it up a little bit, uh, a notch. I mean, nutrition is something that's been uh, maybe I wasn't so focused on before. And I think this summer and that pa the past season uh, was something I really focused on really and really took to another level. Tell me about your diet. Like, did you change something? Did you cut, did you add more, cut out something? Yeah. Like, what what you don't do? you eat anymore? Yeah. Don't I eat? Yeah, what's well, off the plate? Off the plate is uh, sadly a lot of candy. I have, oh. I have a wicked sweet tooth. So do I. What's oh. your favorite? Like, like, what's your favorite candy? Well, I don't know if you ever had like little nerds gummy clusters. Yeah, oh, yeah, my kids love those. Yeah, oh yeah. my god, I yeah, those by far my favorite. But so trying to cut out as much of that as I can, and then one thing I got into um, the past summer was fasting. Actually, like intermittent fasting. Yeah. So, so what was your schedule? What did you do? I would eat. My last meal would be. At, I wouldn't eat past 8 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. And then I wouldn't eat again until 12.31 p.m. And oh. then you just eat big meal, little snack, big meal, go to bed mm -hmm. and just drink water in the morning. And so I do all my workouts and skating in the morning. And I've honestly, the first week was a little bit tough. The yeah. first week I was like, yeah, this is, might not be for me. Mm -hmm. But after getting through it, I've never felt better. It was, it was crazy. Just not even the amount of energy you have, just not feeling heavy and uh yep. felt ready to go black could you black could, coffee in the morning i'm like no i can't while, drink while, black you do, coffee. while you're doing that you can't you, you can't oh i can't drink coffee okay. i'm like a 12 year old like hot chocolate maybe but <laughs> <laughs> not coffee I, I didn't start drinking coffee until i started dating my wife at 37 <laughs> so like you got lots of time yeah. but here's my question can you do that during a season yeah that's the part i guess i'm gonna figure out I so think, you're gonna your goal is to still try and yeah, do that eh? uh yeah. i think i'm probably gonna end up eating Mm -hmm. like a normal person, but mm -hmm. I think I'm going to be conscious of how much I'm eating and probably not eat quite as much in the morning mm -hmm. uh, and just see how I feel in the first couple of weeks. And if I don't like it, then I'll go back to a normal schedule. 
That's that's pretty cool because intermittent fasting. I'm, I'm like I don't do it, but I've started to read about it. I yeah. find it very. I, I find the concept and the idea very interesting. Mm -hmm. And they always tell you if you don't eat your breakfast, you're not going to have the right energy during the day. But you're not the first person to tell me that they found that turning that on its head actually works really well. Yeah. So it's it's been cool to kind of figure that out myself and and see the benefits. Now, did you work on it? Like uh, one thing I really like talking about is especially with skilled players like yourself, the craft of their game. What's your summer workout like in terms of puck skills and things like that? Yeah, for me, a lot of it. Um, luckily, I play with one of the best puck protectors in the game, Aho. Yep. And so I've been able to watch him just the way he doesn't stick handle as much as I think people think he does. It's just carrying the puck and knocking sticks away. Mm -hmm. And that was something I really focused on this year is just being able to go through traffic and not try to dangle everybody, but just place pucks, knock sticks and be able to maneuver my way without having to overcomplicate it. And then mm -hmm. for me is, is uh, I'm just trying to play as much as I can with my head up. Mm -hmm. And I think you can get in trouble when you get caught with your head down, obviously you can get hammered and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I think just being able to maneuver the ice head up, not stick down as much is uh, a combo that I'm hoping is gonna really benefit me this year. Nice. What, what, further to that, I'm, I'm curious about this. What was the hardest thing you mentioned the hardest thing to get off the plate are the, are the, are the nerds clusters. What was the <laughs> hardest thing to get out of your game, though? Because, listen, I, we watched you a lot growing up, and anyone who's watched you, like, elite, elite player, like, great hands, vision, all of it. But when you got to the NHL and now here you are right now, what have you had a hard time getting out of your game that you needed to get out of your game to play in the NHL? I think the biggest thing, well, there's probably two. The first one is puck watching defensively. I think last season my defensive game took a big step, and I think a lot of that had to do with not getting so zoned in on the puck, and uh, that in my early years caused a lot of trouble for my for myself. <laughs> and so just being able to be more aware defensively. And then offensively, um, I like to use my speed. I like to skate a million miles an hour, but yep. uh, I think being able to change it up and not have to skate as hard and add a little more deceptive skating. I think you see guys like Jack Hughes who kind of float through the zone and they're not always going as fast as they can then kind of turn it on and, and mm -hmm. beat guys. So just little aspects like that have been tough to kind of get out because it's been so embedded in me is just skate as hard as you can whenever. But uh, it's been a challenge, but it's been fun. As you evolve through the NHL, has there been any major equipment changes you've made, skate changes, anything like that? Or is it basically the same Yeah, same gear, same thing you used going back to years ago playing junior? Yeah, pretty much the same. I think the only big change, and it's not even big, it's big in my eyes. Um, the I'm lie of your stick. Pardon? The lie of your stick? No. I'm guessing, I'm guessing. No, no, no not, not quite. I've been thinking about it, but okay. I haven't moved there yet. Um, I'm, I loved using skates until they like broke off my feet. Like they were like worn in like sneakers and um, Jordan Stahl actually would give, just give me the hardest time because he switches skates every two weeks, yeah. mm -hmm. but he's a big body. Like he wears them out pretty quick. And so one thing I changed was switching skates more often. And I, I do like it now. I, hmm. I feel like it's nice to, to be in a fresh pair of skates, but that was, that was a tough one for me. Cause like, I liked wearing them until like, the, the I know seams he likes and the toe boots, cap eh? are coming off. Jordan Starr really likes stiff boots. Oh my god! I was god. always told. Yeah, I don't even know how he moves out there, but he moves well. <laughs> <laughs> one, one tough memory bring up just after the Eastern Conference Final, the dressing room after the last game, and like that was uh, that was a heartbreaking series just because the way that those games mm -hmm. went. What was the mood like in the room? What was said? Yeah, I'm sure you could imagine how yeah. it was. A lot of a lot of disappointment. Not not much was said. Um, one that thing that sticks out uh, a lot to me though is um, Roddy when he when he came in like he was like like there's not much you can say to a group at that point and he just kind of came and sat down with us and just having him in there and like being present with us and it felt like he was like not just a coach but on the like on the ice and stuff like that and like a player again so I thought that was pretty mm -hmm. cool just seeing him do that like he wasn't in there trying to cheer us up or or talk to us about what happened. He was just letting us kind of feel the emotions we were feeling and, and kind of go through it with us. So he just sat down? Just and sat down, didn't say much, and just kind of uh, just joined in on 
the bad feeling basically. Mm -hmm. like, like you guys are close. You're right there. Like every mm -hmm. year, you know, people make their list of teams that, you know, can win the Stanley cup and Carolina is on it at, at, for now for years. And, but, but I, when you look at your team, I'm just curious when you, you see and say, for us to break through, this has to happen for us. And what is this in your eyes? Yeah, I think it's easy to speak on last year. Like, I think last year, the injuries to Svech and uh, Pacioretty, I mean, I think those are two guys where if you could drop a playoff player, it's probably you're going to come up with something like that. So that one, just looking back on it, really sucks because those are two guys that can make a big impact in the postseason. But, yeah, I think just um, – Maybe it's more grit. I think we just, I think we brought in some grit with Lemieux and Bunting and guys like that. Just guys that'll, uh, maybe when the game gets a little bit tougher, like I think when we saw what we saw against Florida, like they were getting in our face a little bit. And uh, obviously, you don't want to take a penalty or anything like that, but you won't, you need to have pushback. And mm -hmm. I think they did a good job of bringing in guys that'll maybe settle that down a little bit more. How would you guys have played Vegas? That's a fantastic question. Yeah, that's I a think, really good question. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it would have been a, a fun series just in the way that I think our games are similar but a little bit different. I think they they uh we kind of suffocate teams and and slow and slow the game down and and really um make it hard on teams to get out of their zone. And mm -hmm. I think they're a team that relies on a lot of high speed flying, but they also have that kind of ability to to shut the game down. So I don't know how it would have played out, but I'm I'm hoping we would have won. Like Did you watch says, it? Oh, I couldn't. No. I oh, oh, really? Not, eh? No, uh, not a chance. Like, I know some guys, they won't watch it, but they'll watch the when the cup gets yeah. handed out. Most guys answer the way you do. They can't stand it. No. Like, I had, I'm good buddies with uh, Brett Howden on Vegas. So, like, I watched when he got it, and I was like, this sucks. And then I just turned <laughs> it off. <laughs> well, fingers crossed that uh, people are saying that about I you. I hope so. I hope Howe's is saying the exact same thing about me in June. Uh, good luck this season. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank you very much.